Hello and welcome to this video on VLSI testing. So we are discussing a numerical on VLSI testing. So in this we are given a full adder circuit. So you can see this full adder circuit has three inputs A, B and C in and there are two outputs sum and C out. We have to obtain the controllability and the observability measures of this full adder circuit. So these controllability and observability together are called as testability measures. So this will be the final outcome that we have to find. This is our question. So for each signal line, we have to determine three values. So you can see this one oblique, one oblique, four. So this is a three value tuple V1, V2, V3. It represents the, so this one represents the zero controllability. Then this one represents the one controllability then this four represents the observability so let us see what are these and how we can determine them so we are taking a very simple example of an AND gate so x and y are the inputs of the AND gate and z is the output so see this column this is the column for correct response for AND gate so if input uh, x and y both are zero output is zero now this is the column it is a faulty response so this is the response when there is a stuck at zero fault at z so all the values will be zero now compare this column correct response column with this column stuck at zero fault at z the only difference that we can observe is this is one and this is zero so this is also highlighted in red so to detect the stuck at zero fault at z we have to take x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. So for this detecting this fault, these will be the test vectors x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. So we must be able to control the inputs to detect the fault at the output. Remember this. To detect the fault at the output, we must be able to control the inputs x and y. Similarly, if we have stuck at one fault at x, then this will be the response. Now again compare it with the correct response. The only change is this value. This is 1 and this is 0. So to detect the stuck at 1 fault at x, we have to take test vector x equal to 0 and y equal to 1. So when we give this test vector x equal to 0 and y equal to 1, then what will happen is that the fault will propagate from the input to the output and we must be able to observe the output. So if x is 0, y is 1, what we want is that the output should be 0. But here the, but in this case the output will be 1 so we will be able to observe this one and we will say that there is a fault in our circuit. So to detect the fault at the input we must be able to observe the output so you can see there is a cross correlation to detect the fault at the input the observability of output is critical so there is a cross correlation for fault at input we have to observe the output Similarly, to detect the fault at the output, we must be able to control the inputs. That is, set the input values x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. If we are not able to control the inputs, if we are not able to set them x equal to 1 and y equal to 1, then we can never detect the fault at the output. So again, there is a cross correlation. So to detect fault at the input, the observability of output is critical and to detect the fault at the output, the controllability of inputs is critical. This is the very important point that we must understand. Observability of output is critical in our circuit and controllability of inputs is critical. So this testability analysis is nothing but it is the process of accessing the how easily we can test a circuit so for any signal line we will have three values the combinational zero controllability the combinational one control one controllability so we must be able to 
control the input to either 0 or 1 and we have the combinational observability we must be able to observe that signal line so we must be able to control it to 0 how easily we can control it will be de uh, will be defined by cc0s and cc1s determines how easily or how difficulty or how much difficulty we have to face to set a signal line to 1. Similarly, COS denotes the difficulty of propagating the value from the input to the primary output. Now, for a, we have a set of rules to solve a circuit. So, the CC0 of primary inputs is and CC1 of the primary inputs is always 1. So here x and y are 1. So cc0 of x and cc1 of x will always be equal to 1. Similarly cc0 of y and cc1 of y will always be equal to 1. This is the default. And observability of the output primary output is always set to 0. So controllability can vary from 1 to infinite. 1 means easily controllable and infinite means not controllable at all. Observability varies from 0 to 1. 0 means easily observable and 1 means not observable. Similarly, we have for sequential circuits, we have these three measures. These are for sequential circuits. Now, let us understand with the help of examples. So, we want to calculate the combinational zero controllability for Z. So, it depends on how easily we can set x equal to 0 or y equal to 0 because for end gate the output can be 0 if any input is 0. So cc0 of z is equal to minimum of input 0 control controllabilities plus 1. So why we add 1? We always add 1 when there is a propagational from of a signal from input of a logic gate to output of a logic gate or vice versa. So whenever there is a logic gate involved we add 1. So this will be equal to minimum CC0X, CC0Y plus 1 equal to 2 because CC0 of X is also equal to 1 and CC0 of Y is also equal to 1. So both are same. So 1 plus 1, 2. But if we want to calculate the CC1 of Z, now for AND gate the output can be 1 if both the inputs are 1. So CC1 of Z will be equal to CC1 of X plus CC1 of Y plus 1. Because we must be able to set or control both the inputs to 1. Uh, in For 0, we need to be control any one input to 0. But for 1 controllability, we must be able to control both the inputs to 1. So, the one, control, one controllability for Z will be equal to 3. So, for Z, we have the 3 tuple as 2, oblique 3, oblique 0. Because it's uh, 0 control controllability is 2, 1 controllability is 3 and observability is 0 because it is a primary output. Similarly, the XOR gate, the output can be 0 if both the inputs are 0 or both the inputs are 1. So, the CC0 of Q, if we want to calculate the 0 controllability of Q, then it will be equal to CC0 plus uh, CC0 A plus B or CC1 A plus B. Either A and B both should be 0 or A and B both should be 1. Then the output can be 0 plus 1 because the signal is propagating from input to output. Now coming to observability. Now this is very important. So for observing this A, we can observe input only through the output. There is no other way to observe the input. So the observability of A depends on observability of B plus 1 where B is the output of this inverter and A is the in input of the inverter. Now see this AND gate. In AND gate X dot Y equal to Z. So again if we want to observe X we can only observe through Z. But for observing X through Z we must be able to set Y equal to 1 because if Y equal to 1 then only x will be equal to z. So the observability of z x depends on observability of output z plus one controllability of y. If y is 1, then only we can observe x through z plus 1 because the signal propagates from output 
because there is a logic gate. Similarly, for y we have coz plus cc1x plus 1. Now, this is a NOR gate. So, in NOR gate, the uh, we have p r equal to p plus q bar. So, for observing p, we must be able to control this q to 0. Because if q is 0, then r will be equal to p bar. So, cop will be equal to cor. This observability of p depends on observability of output plus 0 controllability of the other input plus 1. So, remember in observability, for observability of one input will depend on the controllability of other input. Here, the observability of P is depending also on controllability of Q and observability of your output. So, the observability of any input depends on controllability of other input plus observability of output. Remember this. Now we are coming to our numerical. So for uh, this full adder circuit, we have to calculate the these three testability measures for all the signal lines. So for iteration one, we will calculate for primary inputs and outputs. So for primary inputs, we will set the zero controllability and one controllability both to one. So one oblique one and the observability we do not know initially so we have kept that as blank so this is one one this also will all be one but for outputs we will set the observability to zero because these are the primary outputs the sum and c out are the primary outputs a b and c in these are the primary inputs in the iteration in three we will calculate for the outputs of these logic gates so again, for, uh, this is XOR gate. So it, uh, it's zero controllability depends on uh, A uh, control to zero or B control to zero. Uh, A control to zero plus B control to zero or A control to one and B control to one. So one plus one plus one, three. So both these will be three. So uh, you can easily understand. C coming to this end gate, the zero control, uh, the zero controllability of the output will be equal to uh, minimum of input zero controllability is plus one. So one plus one, two. The one controllability for the output will be equal to one controllability for both the inputs. So one plus one plus one, three. Why we are adding one? Because we are having a logic gate uh, in between the input and the output. So similarly, these values will be calculated. So this is iteration two. Now iteration three and four. So uh, this is uh, your XOR gate. So again, uh, this 5, how this 5 comes? 3 plus 1 plus 1, 5. Again, this 3 plus 1 plus 1, 5. So this will be 5. For this AND gate, uh, uh, this output observability, uh, output controllability, 0 controllability, 1 plus 1, 2. And 1 controllability, 3 plus 1, this 3, uh, this is 3 plus 1 plus 1. So this will be 5. And now this is 2 and 3. So this is or, or uh, this is your OR gate. So in the OR gate, the input is 0 only and only if both the inputs are 0. So we have to uh, add this 2 and this 2. These two controllability of the inputs plus 1 for logic gate. So 5. And it it uh, its output is 1 if any of the input is 1. So we can take this 3 plus 1, 4. We can also take this 5 plus 1 but that will be 6 we want the value to be minimum remember this point if we take this this signal to be 1 then it will be equal to 5 plus 1 6 but 6 will be bigger than 1 bigger than 4 so be, uh, because we can easily set it to 1 this output we can easily set to 1 by setting this input as 1 so 3 plus 1 4 so we are not writing 5 oblique 6 we are writing 5 oblique 4 oblique 0 remember this this is very critical to understand. Now we have determined all the controllabilities. We have to determine the observabilities that are remaining. So now for this, how we will calculate this three. So see, uh, if you have, uh, this is the, this is your signal line. So how this can be observed by setting this signal line to be equal to one or this signal line 
to be equal to zero because this is your OR gate. So how this can be observed by setting the other signal line to zero and it will also depend on the observability of output here observability of output is zero. So two plus one three. Now coming to so this will be here. So now coming to uh, this value, how we calculated this as five. So it will depend on this three, the observability of output plus zero control controllability of the other input. Because for AND gate, we must be able to, for uh, observing one input, we must be able to set the other input as uh, one so one controllability of other input so this is one so three plus one plus one five here how it is seven three plus three because for uh, observing this input we have to set this input to be equal to one so this three this three plus one so we are getting this as seven now for this so this is uh, this is your XOR gate. So how we can observe this, uh, how we can observe this input by controlling this input to be zero. So one plus zero plus one, two. And how we can observe this input by controlling this input to zero. So three plus zero plus one, four. Now, uh, see, so uh, this for this line, uh, it has two branches. So this is one oblique, one oblique seven, and this is one oblique, one oblique four. So we will choose the minimum value. So this will be equal to one oblique, one oblique four, not one oblique, one oblique seven. Here also, uh, this line, uh, this has two branches. So three oblique, three oblique two, and three oblique, three oblique five. So we will choose the minimum value, three oblique, three oblique two. How? Now again, uh, for this, uh, we will, for how we will calculate this four. So two, plus one and one for the logic gate. So that is four. Again, how we got this four. So two plus one plus one for the logic gate. So four. How we got this five, three, uh, ob uh, the observability of output plus one controllability of other input. So uh, three plus one plus one, we got this five. So again, uh, this uh, has two branches, one oblique, one oblique four and one oblique, one oblique five. So we will choose the minimum value that is one oblique, one oblique four. So this is the minimum result. Uh, in this way, we can calculate the observability, observabilities and the controllability. So first we will calculate the uh, controllabilities and finally we will calculate the observabilities because to calculate the observability, we also need to find the controllability of the other input. So in this way, we can uh, get this result. So uh, to uh, simplify this, uh, we have this table. So for the AND gate, the zero controllability is equal to minimum input controllability is plus one. And one controllability is equal to sigma of input one controllability is plus one. So if you see this table, it will be very easy for you to determine these values. But we do not need to uh, remember these values. We just need to remember how we got them and um, just the logic to uh, find them because it will be impossible to remember these three values and you will get confused in the end. Because the logic is very simple. So you can easily calculate it from the logic. So thank you. Please like and share the video and subscribe the channel.